Everyone should keep quiet. They have a bomb on board, and if anyone tried to do anything, they'd, they'd blow up the plane. The, the, the hijackers were, were positioned near the cockpit, just in front of the, you know, between the, the first class and the cockpit. So that's where they were. And I remember coming the name, sort of walking towards them and, you know, trying to talk to them. He walked uh, into our section of the plane, and um, he asked the men to stand up and, and take on these people because there were only three of them, and he felt that we had enough strength to disarm them. So I must say it was a very brave gesture because throughout the flight, nobody stood up. The sun breaks through the piercing chill of night on the plain outside Corum. It lights up a biblical famine, now in the 20th century. This place, say workers here, is the closest thing to hell on earth. I don't feel happy doing assignments like these. Uh, I don't think anybody can feel happy uh, going and filming people dying. I feel myself that by actually going there and recording the events that are taking place, and some of it is perhaps interfering with the dignity of, uh, of, of the people who are suffering, you just see this and you feel this is going to get the message across stronger than perhaps the next child.
accident, I was advised by my friends, family, relatives that, um, you know, you've done your bit and it's time to, to slow down. It's time to take a break. You know, you don't need anything. I mean, I'm wealthy enough to, 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 to pay my bills and to live in the same style as I live at the moment. But I don't, I'm not interested. I mean, I, I, I lost my arm and I immediately, when I got up, out of the hospital, I tried to try and get back to the work that I love.